The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 48. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us on the EL. Today we have Natalie Sisson, author of The Suitcase Entrepreneur. And I recently just got to meet Natalie at one of the past conferences I was at. So I'm really excited for her to share her book with you. Um, Another book that's definitely not on theory, but based on her personal experience. Welcome, Natalie. And thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Thank you so much for having me. Will you take just a moment to introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about you personally? For sure. So I've been traveling and living out of my suitcase for four full years. I have no home. I literally am the suitcase entrepreneur and I just love to create a ton of freedom and adventure in my life and those of others. So I've built a brand and a business based around doing that and helping people build profitable businesses they can run from anywhere. Thank you for sharing that. Now let's jump right into your book, The Suitcase Entrepreneur, which was just made available for purchase last year, August 4th, I guess, 2013. And Ali, we're going to move fairly quickly, but here are some of the top questions that our audience made up of uh, entrepreneurial readers would love to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing The Suitcase Entrepreneur? It's because I think I've been doing this for such a long time now, and I felt I finally had a book in me to write about, and then I could share my journey and my story and how people have been doing this for themselves, building these crazy, awesome lifestyles, but also really successful businesses in a book format. So I'd always wanted to write a book. I finally felt I had enough knowledge and expertise to share. And I wanted something that would challenge the four hour work week, which was, you know, so inspirational for so many, but was a lot of kind of high floating theories and not much of the practical. So I'm very much action focused. And that's what I wanted my book to be the most practical guide for creating a business you love from anywhere. So you just touched on this, but I'm going to ask anyway, um, so there's, I was looking at, and on Amazon in any given month, there can be like a hundred to 150 different books that come out on entrepreneurship. So mm-hmm. what makes your book different from others regarding the same topic? Uh, yeah, great question. I think there's a lot of make money online type things. And I think there's also a lot of travel books, but I really have become known as the person who gives practical and inspirational advice on exactly how to do this for yourself based off your own experience, expertise, um, and your, you know, things that you're really good at what you already know and what you can do really well. So I think I make it practical for people who have hit their sweet spot and now they want to take it into a business they can run from anywhere. Sorry, noisy car outside. And secondly, um, I think it's because I actually provide real life practical examples and case studies of other people doing it. And it's very much based on evidence and application throughout. So it's, as I said, super hands-on practical book. And with that being said, how do you want the reader to engage with this book? Uh, do you want, is it possible for them to jump in and jump out based on, on content that they need at that time? Or is this really a book that you designed to be read from beginning to end? That's a really great question. I actually say right in the introduction, if you're at this stage of your business and you're just starting out and you want to see if you're cut out to being an entrepreneur and that you actually can run a business from anywhere and you're wanting more freedom, start at the very beginning. Um, I say if you've already got a business and you're wanting to get to the practical aspects of um, online tools and outsourcing and social media and marketing and all those things, then skip to act two. And I was like, if you actually, you know, just want to get straight into how do you become more location independent or travel the world, then go to act three. So I do make it pretty clear within that. I do feel people can jump in and jump out. And it's been called a a Bible because people have bookmarked it and earmarked it and highlighted it for various stages of where they're at. So I know people have come back to it again and again when they're going on their travels or when they're maybe starting a new business. And uh, I just love that it's chock full of (laughs) tools and accessories and uh, from traveling to business that people keep coming back to. So it's kind of that business Bible Great. So I want to go off the the beaten path here for just one second. I usually don't do this, but did you design your cover for your book? So I had it designed by a designer, but yeah, it was pretty much what I was, what I was after. I went with three different designs and that one went out. You have one of the the prettiest books. I mean, I don't know how I would see this if I was walking through this. I bought it off Amazon, but I don't know how I would walk through a, a bookstore and not pick up this book. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's been described as pretty. It's meant to make you just want to sit right there at that, that table with the outlook over the boat and just plonk yourself there and put yourself in that position. That's exactly what it does. Even the yeah. drink. It's just like, man, yeah. I wish I had that drink with my laptop 
right, right, yeah, sitting in that chair. So that's awesome. It's great to hear. Now, now that we know the background behind the book, um, mm-hmm. this is my favorite part, and I really want to just hand over the mic to you and allow you to take us through from A to Z. And really, what we're doing is is allowing this reader, or again, this, it's a listener, but the reader, the future reader, to know is this my next great book? And so, will you give us a summary? <laughs> yeah, I would love to. So. In a nutshell, it's broken out into three acts because I, for some reason I like stage acting in movies. Um, and it is perfect for people who are wanting to choose their own adventure. So they're at a point in their life where they really want to start their own business or their side hustle that allows them to do whatever they want in life, which sounds like a big promise, but I truly believe that you get to choose to live life on your own terms. And that's what this book takes you through. So act one is all about Welcome you, welcoming you to the new world of digital nomads and what that means, um, what freedom and business and adventure in life really is and whether you're cut out for it because it's not for everybody. So things like the four things you need to be free and, and real stories of case studies of other people living life on their own terms. Act two is about building an online business you can take anywhere. So the future of work, I love looking at trends and things like that as well as um, I'm sorry, so there's actually a parade going on outside, which is really exciting. So if you hear some drums, that's why. Uh, Through to, um, you know, becoming a citizen of the world, what does that look like? People are always asking me, how do you set up your business and run it from anywhere? And what are the legal implications? And how do you do banking and all that sort of stuff? Through to the best systems and online tools to run your business. As I said, social media, marketing, outsourcing. And the final part is probably one of my favorite, you know, It's how on earth do you become a suitcase entrepreneur? I know nobody really wants to live out of a suitcase like me, but how do you become a pro at being homeless and deciding on where you want to travel and what you should actually pack or the art of minimalism and living life very much in a more free way and then travel hacking tips. So I feel like there's something for everybody depending on their stage of where they're at and business and life. Did that answer the question? Yeah, absolutely. And can you, <laughs> it, it does. And what I'm looking for is maybe, can you go into a little bit depth? And it, I don't know if you can crack open your book um, with us, but maybe just take us through um, and give us just a little bit more, I guess, on each. It doesn't have to be chapter by chapter, but just a oh. little bit more. Because this is this book is chock full of information. And like you said in the, in the, in, in the pre-part, it's you live this. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, if you could just take us a little bit deeper, that'd be amazing. Okay, cool. I just didn't want to go too into it, get people to give them a surprise when they get in there. I think the biggest thing that the book really talks about is the realities of this. So a lot of people sugarcoat the lifestyle of, you know, running your own business and being able to take it anywhere, Um, you know, working from the beach, which actually nobody really should do because it's really glary and you sweat and when you're at the beach, you should be at the beach. Um, But what I do really try and do is give you that really honest look of why this is an amazing lifestyle to lead when you get to choose how you want to live life on your own terms, but also the realities of it. The fact that people who are living conventional lifestyles may not agree with what you're doing. They might not understand it. You might feel lonely from time to time. Um, And that's a big thing that I didn't really consider when I started out running my blog, which turned into a business. And you know, that's where you need mentors and advice and masterminds and peer groups of supportive people. And then there's the whole aspect of, you know, running a business is one thing and making it successful requires a ton of effort initially. Um, And it's a huge challenge and it's not for everybody, but trying to do that while you're traveling the world or live an unconventional lifestyle is even more taxing and challenging. I personally love the challenge. I love um, the ability to just change locations and cultures. I love uh, expecting the unexpected, but I really try to put across here, you know, there's all sorts of ways that you can live life on your own terms. It doesn't have to be my way or the highway by any means, but that you do need to be prepared mentally and physically for what you're going to encounter because it is an adventure. Um, And I think I give enough, as I said, of practical ideas and ways that you can do this yourself. I hate people who kind of say, you know, here's what I did, here's what you should do as well. I actually tell people to take their own path and route based off their sweet spot, which we all know is what you're really good at, what you enjoy doing and what people will pay you for. And I think it's because after all these years of running my own business and having people go, I'd love to do what you do, Natalie, but I just don't think I can. Or they say, oh, I'd love to do that one day and one day doesn't come. So I really have made this book something that can get people to just jump off the couch and start doing, start implementing straight away to get them on their path to their their perfect kind of vision for what they want out of life and business. Um, and throughout it, I also have practical applications. So there's the, you know, the inspirational aspect and then there's the, how do you apply this to yourself? And at the end of each chapter, there's kind of 
a here's what you can do right now to take yourself further on this. As I said, there's tons of resources in it. So I know for some people, chapters five, which is about building an online business, I literally talk you through the virtual office setup and every single tool, application, software, or app that you can use. And people have just found that so ridiculously useful because this is something I've tested and tried for years. And I forget that not everybody knows about all these things or how to make their life easier. And um, right through into kind of just how do you go about building something from nothing and also make it something that fits around the life that you want. Um, yeah, so that's more what I'm talking about there, I think. I, that's just the kind of feedback that I've got from people is that, it, as you said, it's packed with information, but I feel it takes you on a journey and helps you to come back to it at any point, read up on something again, really grasp it, and then put it into action. Because one of my biggest... I guess USPs are one of the things that I'm known for is helping people to break it down, break down the basics and then actually put into action and get results out of it. Perfect. Now, Emma, stray again just a little bit because I, I know if I was listening to this right now, I would want to know, knowing that you've traveled as much as you have, what mm -hmm. is your favorite place so far that you've been? <laughs> I, I love to dream build and I, I'm assuming that, that some of our some of our listeners are the same way. And so I'd love to hear some of the either, you know, the coolest place you've been, one of the coolest things you've done or something like that. I think I can never narrow it down to one, but I have three favorite countries in the world as of this moment. Um, Spain. Spain has just always been one of my favorite countries. They have a great setup, a great lifestyle. They're very focused on having a good time, like working hard, but also really living life. You know, they love their sangria and their wine. They spend a lot of time with their family and friends. They party the night away. They have siestas during the day and they make the most of life. They're also a little more relaxed. And I just love their passion and their spirit and the language. Um, and then Brazil. Brazil is, is similar in that I love the passion and energy. Uh, it's also just a really fascinating country. And also, I, I like that it's a little bit risky in places. You know, when I went to Rio de Janeiro, people were like, oh, don't go out in the streets at night by yourself and don't take the public transport. And I did all those things and it was fine. And just to get there in Copacabana Beach and Ipanema and Sugarloaf Mountain and be to all those sort of famous places that you hear about and see about and be there physically was really fascinating. Um, and I've actually traveled to many parts of the country with carnival and stuff. So I just love the way they live their life. And the final one is, um, well, not final by any means, is Laos in Southeast Asia. I really love the simple, beautiful life that they live there. They're very, in some ways, not exposed to the rest of, you know, Western culture at all. So they don't really know what they're missing maybe, but they live a beautiful life by the Mekong River. The river runs through everything they do. Uh, they focus on family and relationships, simple foods, living off the land, pets and animals. And uh, I just felt very at peace when I was there. And like uh, minimalism was something that was kind of embraced and that they were very present in their everyday life. So totally different countries for different reasons, but they'd probably be my top three outside of New Zealand, of course, which is paradise. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. That is definitely a dream builder. I have three new places that I, that I need to go. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been strictly like U S and Mexico. So anything, anything besides those two, and you're talking new territory for me. So that, that's amazing. Out. <laughs> yes, I do. Now this, this next question I believe is a little bit mean, but it's so, it's so relevant. That's just basically, so we just talked about your book has a ton of great, you know, phenomenal information, but if the reader can only take away one concept or principle or action item out of your entire book, what would you want that to be? I would love that to be, and I am going to quote somebody else here, one of my favorite quotes of all time, the principle of Yoda, which is, do or do not, there is no try. Um, pretty much live my life by that principle, and I feel that comes across in my book the whole time, is just take action. Like, you can't wait for tomorrow. Do whatever you've been putting off all your life now, because tomorrow may never come. And it may sound a little bit, once again, high and mighty, but... Honestly, the biggest things that I've seen my community and my customers and my clients get stuck on is just not believing in their dream enough to take massive action on it and make it a reality. And that saddens me and I want more people to be living their absolute best life right now. Yeah, I think that's huge. I think it, that's part of the entrepreneur mindset is that you really don't say, oh, I will try. You just say, okay, I'll do it. Exactly. You know? So that, that's amazing. And you might have just answered the next question because it said, well, actually, this is a little bit different because <laughs> I'm looking for a favorite quote from your book. Um, do you have something that you wrote that you love or something that the audience has, maybe you didn't think it was that great, but the audience has really gotten back to you and let you know they loved it? 
Yeah, I do quote myself in the book because, you know, any good author should quote themselves. <laughs> um, but one of my favorites is probably from Colin Wright, um, who's a good friend and also much of a digital nomad. And I really liked his quote, which is, you can lead a contented life without taking risks but you'll be unlikely to live a truly, wildly happy one if you don't. And I like coming back to that. I actually had it printed up on a postcard along with some other quotes, including my own, because that to me is just one you can read on an everyday, um, every day and kind of go, yeah, I'm procrastinating right now. Or, yep, I'm making excuses. I'm just going to go and do it. That's awesome. I kind of feel when you say digital nomad that it's kind of a, not a cult, but maybe a, a group of you that gets together and, and travels <laughs> or like you have a, a, a secret Facebook group that you guys get on maybe talk about <laughs> no, your travels we meet up in secret <laughs> locations around the world no, but I think we do have an affinity for just like meeting up on different continents are you going to yeah. be here during this time and yes and then you kind of get these hubs of people who are you know living and working on their own terms meeting up in cool places around the world that's so awesome that's great Okay, Natalie, this is also one of my favorite questions because I, I absolutely love to read. I love content, and it's not just about the reading or the content, but I love to move forward either in my life personally or professionally. And so the, the last question is, if there was another book or one book that you could recommend to your listeners based on the way it impacted your life, based on the way it, it created a paradigm shift for you, what would that book be? For me, it is, and you've probably had this quoted a lot, um, Oh, shoot. Actually, there's three, but that doesn't really help. I, I was going to say Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, but I actually honestly think it was probably Awaken the Giant Within by Anthony Robbins. I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins, and I read it at a particular time when I was making transitions in my life, and it just pumped me up. You know, he's always like, we're going to get juiced. I pretty much felt like that for the entire time that I was reading it, and I went through um, a lot of amazing things that year and just had a hugely successful year personally and professionally. So that made a big big impact on me, I think. One of the things I love about Tony Robbins or just reading a book in general is that if you've heard them speak before, you mm -hmm. automatically read the book. It's like they're, they're reading it inside your mind, or at least it is for me. Uh, now, Napoleon Hill, I never got to actually hear, but when you say Think Girl, that's my favorite book of all time and similar type thing. It kind of came through to me at a time where you know, I'm in college. I'm kind of going, why am I learning all this content? And, you know, I talk about it all the time, but I, I take my after, you know, I think I was 21, I'd take my business law book and I'd put it on top of my backpack, kind of tilt it up and then put Think and Grow Rich in it and read it so that my, you know, my professor thought I was reading along with him, uh, you know, in the business law book or whatever. I think that's what it was, business law. But that book changed. I mean, I, it didn't take me long before reading it. I was like, whoa, I'm, you know, I'm reading the wrong books here in school. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to start, I'm going to start a different kind of education while I'm here, in, you know, at college. So both phenomenal books. I love, do you ever do you ever do you ever hear the uh, or like when you're reading that do you hear Tony Robbins saying it in the way that he I talks? Because I also listened to his Power Hour CD set. I mean, this was when I was doing my body sculpting competition, and I had I was just studying extramurally. I had my first full time, full on awesome role, and um, yeah, I just used to listen to his voice. And uh, I'd go into the office and really piss off all my colleagues because I'd be like, hey, you feeling juice? We're going to do this today. We're going to have... And they'd just be like, oh, God, you've been listening to Anthony Robbins. But I loved it. I mean, I was pumped up that entire year and I've taken a lot away from it. No, that's great. Well, Natalie, thank you so much for your time. And before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to get more information on you and your book, The Suitcase Entrepreneur? Yeah, for sure. I mean, suitcaseentrepreneur.com is, is where I'm at. I'm all over the interwebs in that way. And there's links there to get my book. It's available on Amazon and also on my site, the audio book, which I'm really excited about having out. And um, just a whole lot of ways you can interact with me there. And then I think for people who are really interested in what the book has, I've taken the best of this book um, a blog challenge and my workshops that I've been running all over the world to teach what I've learned over the last four years and put it into something called the Freedom Plan. So if people are really interested in building a profitable business that actually supports the lifestyle they'd love, then they should go to suitcaseentrepreneur.com forward slash freedom plan. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. And I think there will probably be a lot of people that are very interested in that, especially with this audience. So Natalie, again, thank you for, for <laughs> taking the time to come on and, and share your, your creation, your book with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been fun to kind of reminisce over all the juiciness in it. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like to get your hands on The Suitcase Entrepreneur or any of the other resources men mentioned by Natalie, 
Just look at the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.